we met a long time ago. Oh, oh yeah, of course. Celebrating the launch of her new novel, Heart Glass. Uh, if you haven't read it yet, it's a fantastic read. An electric, fast-paced, wonderful novel set in the early 80s, featuring disco and all sorts of wonderful things going on in Macau. Um, so, if you haven't got a copy, please buy a copy today. <laughs> Ivy's here to sign it. Um, and Ivy is just going to say a few words and do a little reading for us now. So, Great, thank you. you very much, Dave. Um, okay, great. Um, good evening to all of you here. Um, firstly, thanks very much uh, for coming to support me in person. Um, it's great to see you, and it really means a lot to me to, to see you here today. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Unbound, my publisher, and obviously I'd like to ta thank Dave of Kensington Books, um, who's worked closely with me um, to make tonight happen. Um, the bit I'm going to be reading from is near the beginning. Uh, so the, the, the protagonist is, she's a low life, um, she's poor, she's supposed to pickpocket this Italian businessman guy who liked her, but instead she drank a bottle of champagne and <laughs> passed out. She wakes up in the apartment of this guy who has just offered her a job abroad. Um, and she's never had a real job before, let alone abroad. Um, so, uh, so this scene that I'm reading is when she, she's just woken up um, in his uh, apartment. So before I start as well, I'm going to say that um, I'm going to be reading in the characters' own voices. So I'd like to apologize to uh, anybody here who is uh, American of Chinese origin, <laughs> American of Italian origin, uh, American of white American working class origin. I'm, I'm not an actor, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Paolo said that all this happened because I had nothing to eat for three days, after which I drank a bottle of champagne on my own. I'd failed to tax him. Niente, zilch, diddly squat, nada from his sharp skin pocket. Never mind the pockets of the others. I squeezed my eyes shut in pain. You're going to be eating a lot of pizzas from now, huh? <laughs> You're one bad kitty. Yeah, and he's top cat. But wait, one, I don't know anything. And two, I don't know anything about you. Well, for a start, one, you're smart, and two, you know my name is Paolo Giamatti Russo. And three, that's all you need to know, I promise. <laughs> I slept, ate, slept. When I woke up, I was exhausted. I slept some more. It seemed no more than a few hours. But later, Paolo said I had been recovering for six days. I was no longer exhausted. He said I got the job and was good to go. Dallas said to get out of town, didn't she? So now I got a great job abroad and I had a ticket and a passport in my real name, Leanne Donahue, and the clothes on me. I was no longer Madison. This was my chance from starvation to starting anew. I went back to my landlady and said my sayonaras. I always thought you were gonna go up in the world, she said. Now you got a job abroad. Well, make sure you gotta come back for my sushi pie. <laughs> I didn't know what that was, but it sounded disgusting. Before she could offer me any to take on the trip, I grabbed my wine red Gibson Les Paul and hastily left with all the possessions I had in three wee vaults shopping bags back from when Dallas and I went on a spree at Harlem Irving. Those were good days. But better days were waiting for me, and nights, crime-free, early nights, after honest work, like a regular girl, and how. Paolo's taxi was downstairs, purring. He was alone. I couldn't think. I felt so proud. I could hear myself laughing internally. I wore my striped leggings, oversized sweater with ventilation holes, and my big, bad thrift store coat. As I clattered down the back rusty iron outdoor staircase, I waved and smiled to Paolo. 
I wore my red frame glasses as he seemed to like them. He trusted me for some reason. Being trusted was greater than being loved. Come on, come on. Paolo waved impatiently, grinning. I dumped the three bags into the nearest trash can at the bottom of the staircase. I'm coming right now, I said and got in the car. Cheat yet? He asked. I was so excited, I haven't even thought about eating. I shook my head. We stopped by a stand and Paolo said, Give me a dog with everything. He looked at me. Make that too. Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Oh. <laughs> very short and sweet. Um, please take a look at the table with the books and the 80s goodies. Um, the goodies are five pounds cash payable to me or my street team, Mary. Um, the books, please take them to the till. Um, um, please support me um, and support indie bookshops. Um, as you know, writing is a non-profit organization. So any non-profit from tonight goes back into writing, the purchase of cosmetics and trained cartridges. Thank you. Any quick questions? Um, please raise them now. Hmm. No question. That's interesting. Okay, great. Then. <laughs> uh, there's a question. Um, what was the inspiration for you to write <laughs> Anything. <laughs> we, I was, we were living in Penang at the time, seven years ago, and. Um, we found this book in the Chow Rasta market, uh, which was really always Ian Fleming's thr Thrilling Cities. As you know, Ian Fleming wrote James Bond. Um, and it was from 1962. And uh, amongst the thrilling cities of the world in the 60s uh, was Macau, Chicago, uh, Tokyo, uh, New York, uh, and Hong Kong. So after reading, I thought, wow, you know, this like, it's like all baddies, it's all crime. <laughs> it's jazz music, it's fantastic. So um, it was a source of inspiration for me. Okay. <laughs> so it's a James Bond novel. <laughs> I also really enjoyed the 80s setting, something yeah, you don't see very often great. in novels yeah. these days, so I just yeah. wondered why you decided to, to set it at that time. Was it to do with those cities at that time, or was there more to it than that? Um, the 80s um, was a time of access. Uh, was a time of desire and power and also it was a time when uh, people were still free, people were still discovering themes, genres, they were still discovering for themselves whereas now I think it's quite rigid, you, everything belongs somewhere and it's got to belong somewhere and I think there was a sense, there was a sense of um, uh, also something very subversive about the 80s <laughs> so did you start your book in Phnom Penh? Sorry? Why did you start your book in London when you returned? Or? Um, no, I, I wrote it when I was there. Um, it took uh, nine months. Um, but it's taken seven years to come out. Um, finding publisher. Um, ed the editing which took more than a year, 16 months. So One process. So it took a long time to to make tonight happen and to make this book that sits on the table here. Lovely congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for all the effort. <laughs>